I will start recording. Perfect. Thank you all for joining uh, the day eight. This is uh, really, um, um, you know, uh, really appreciate everyone, um, you know, joining. Um, I hope everyone has been able to continue uh, and be on track with the learning journey. All the days, all the seven days of recordings and assignments are posted on the respective event pages where you would have RSVP. So you can just go to the learners chapter on UiPath community and find all the details over there uh, even uh, please make sure that you are registered for the future sessions as well uh, in some time i'll be posting the link to the um, you know uh, link to the next tomorrow's session over here wherein you can register uh, sangya you are asking me something uh Will you be eligible for the certificate? Yes, if you if you if, if it's just one one session that you you have missed, it's okay. You will still be eligible for the certificate, so you don't need to worry about that, uh, guys. Uh, uh, and all the participants, in case you are missing out on one or two sessions, uh, please uh, don't worry about that. Just let me know that you have missed these sessions, uh, and and make sure that you go and find the recordings and complete the assessments, uh, complete the assignments, and uh, you will be eligible for the recordings uh, for for the certificates still. So. Uh, please don't worry about the certificates at this point that is a, that is that is not the priority please make sure that you give your 100 percent for the learning um, any challenges that you are facing um, any challenges that uh, you might uh, you, any, any place you feel that you are getting stuck on please go to forum.uipart.com and raise your questions there please make sure that the description for those challenges are in detail so that anyone who is responding to your questions have the right uh, context before helping you out uh, other option is always that on Saturdays we are doing this uh, in-person in activities uh, or in-person connect with the mentors. So you can also join there and uh, you will be able to unmute yourself and ask your question directly to the mentor and experts. Uh, so that is pretty much uh, about uh, it. And um, Patrulu, I hand it over to you for taking up the session. Yeah, uh, thanks Rohit. Uh, thank you everyone for joining the session. And um, so today's session is very much important for us. Like, uh, uh, let me share my screen. Confirm your Rohit. Like, uh, yes, I screen. can see your screen. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so uh, today's session is all about like PDF automation, and uh, uh, why I'm saying like it is very important. Uh, now industry is like much more focused on the document data extraction and PDF data extraction, whereas like we have more. Uh, human intervention in the document data extraction, like we need to read, um, go through the invoices and some uh, documents and we need to put that into uh, the internal systems and all. So it is very important for us uh, like as an RPA because that is giving us much, much more uh, uh, saving of efforts. And uh, about me, like I'm working as UiPath developer uh, with Jade Global and um, when it's specific to UiPath, I have total five plus years of experience on UiPath implementations. And my core expertise is like uh, much more into the finance, uh, domain automation and uh, document data extraction. Like I work with multiple uh, OCR engines and like uh, different tools which are related to the document data extraction as well. And uh, it's, uh, it's about me. And uh, like today what we are going to cover and what we are going to get out of this session is like uh, we'll be, uh, uh, discussing like uh, why we need to automate the PDF doc, uh, data extraction and what are the different uh, types of documents we are going to have and uh, what are the different OCR engines we have in UiPath and why we require an OCR engines and uh, uh, so we'll be uh, going with uh, uh, regular expressions in the introduction as well and we will uh, build a small use case like uh, which will help us to automate the invoice data extraction okay and with the help of regular expressions and uh, yeah so why uh, the importance of pdf doc document data extraction if we see in the industry like uh, in every industry is dealing with uh, a lot of pdf documents so for example we can say uh, PDF, uh, invoices is the most uh, common automation like every company wants to implement in their organization. And uh, we have a lot of other as well, like legal documents or utility bills or uh, uh, rental agreements. So these are the most common automations uh, we have in the industry when it comes to document data extraction. And 
so when it comes to uh, sorry uh, when it comes to uh, types of documents like uh, documents can be categorized into uh, two types let me pull out types of documents the categorization can be of two ways one is uh, based on its uh, document type uh, whether it's a scan document or digital document we can say digital document uh, is nothing but the native pdf document which is uh, system generated pdfs when it comes to the scan documents kind of like whenever we scan any pdf document or like images kind of thing and this we can directly use our pdf activities available in uipath uh, to read the data from the digital documents when it comes to scan documents we need the ocr engines in order to automate uh, the scan documents and the other categorization uh, we can see is a type of document like based on the data what we have in the document we can categorize that into structured semi structured unstructured so these are the three categorizations we have for the documents based on how the document uh, data in the document is available and when it comes to the scan uh, structured documents uh, for best example we have driving license passport identity cards identity cards in the sense like national government other uh, authority identity cards like these will be common or same uh, format all throughout the country or like uh, throughout a uh, region so there won't be much changes in that so these we call it as a structured documents when it comes to the semi structured the best example we have is invoices because these are these looks to be structured but it will be changing from the customer vendor to vendor like every company will have its their own uh, format of invoices and when it comes to the unstructured documents it is um, legal documents rental agreements or uh, medical transcriptions so these are like uh, we don't have any fixed format for this that's why we call it as unstructured document so to automate any of these type of documents for a structured document we can easily automate through rpa and here we can automate invoices or semi structured with rpa and we need to have a flavor of ai um kind of thing uh, but uh, for up to some extent we can automate with the help of rpa directly and yeah i the best example i can say like uh, we have a document understanding you like and these unstructured documents it's not at all possible to automate through rpa because we need to uh, know the intent or like uh, the summarization of that particular documents so it is purely ai related stuff again this we can achieve with our document understanding these we have like if someone wants to explore after these uh, series is and uh, to know more about this document understanding like we have that in our academy and you can go through uh, those to explore a bit more on this uh, document understanding but for now this is not required so these are the types of documents we have and um uh, before going to the uh, ocr engines available in ui path let us uh, discuss about the uh, purpose of the ocr engines and uh, what actually the ocr engines 
OCR is stands for optical character recognition. So this will help us to read the data from uh, any images, like with the help of OCR engines. And um, it will retrieve the, uh, uh, like uh, text or numbers, whatever is there in the images, it will retrieve the data and it will return us. So this OCR engines will help us to automate any scanned documents. And uh, we'll see about the regular expressions and then uh, invoices uh, in the latest days. And what are the different activities we have in the UI part? We have a uh, read PDF text and uh, read PDF text with OCR. And these two work with uh, in a similar fashion, whereas like read PDF text is for the digital documents. Whereas read PDF text with OCR is for scanned documents. Export PDF as an image, uh, like uh, there might be some scenarios where you may need to convert your PDF to an image. Uh, so in that case, we will be using that and it will simply convert your PDF and it will uh, convert that to an image. Uh, like let us suppose, you, um, uh, in any of the process, like you just need to store your PDF as an image, then we will be using this and extract images from the PDF. Like there is a possibility that you have a PDF document and in that you have a, some images and you want to extract only those images from the PDF and store it in some location, then we will be using this extract images from the PDF and extract PDF page range is like uh, splitting of the invoices. Like we have a PDF document of let us suppose uh, 10 pages. Um, We have a PDF document of 10 pages. And my area of interest is only page one, three, and four. Then we can use this extract PDF range activity and we can generate a new PDF document uh, with only these three pages. And we will be ignoring all the other pages. So it's a kind of like splitting of a PDF document in, uh, like based on the page numbers. And get PDF page count is like to give written you how many pages that actually that PDF is having. Like let us suppose I have a PDF page of 10, uh, PDF document of uh, 10 pages, then this will return as the page count in an integer format. And join PDF is like uh, when we have two different uh, uh, PDF documents and I want to merge those two, then we'll be using this join uh, PDF files. And manage PDF password is like, uh, it will help us to change the password of existing uh, document or remove the password. So these are the two uh, scenarios which we will be doing with a managed PDF password. And OCR engines in UiPath, like as I said, like. Uh, uh, to use this read PDF text with OCR, we need to have uh, the OCR engines. So what are the OCR engines we have in the UI path is like there are, uh, uh, we have few more in, uh, OCR engines as well. Like uh, I just mentioned like most commonly used OCR engines. And we have the Tesseract OCR engine, Microsoft OCR engine, and OmniPage OCR engine. These three OCR engines are free, like open source or like you can say, uh, we can use without any license. And when it comes to the license, uh, we have the Google Cloud Vision OCR, Microsoft Computer Vision OCR, UiPath Document OCR, and UiPath Screen OCR. So these four, five, six, seven, these OCR engines are like, uh, we need to acquire an API key from uh, respective uh, companies. And um, so uh, like what actually differs between these OCR engines? There is no difference between any of these OCR engines. Everything is same like uh, the only provider is different and the accuracy is different. When it comes to the free OCR engines, uh, accuracy will be a bit lesser compared to this uh, licensed OCR engines. So when I uh, validated against all the OCR engines, um, I could able to see good result with uh, UiPath document OCR than any of others. And then Google Cloud is standing next to it.
okay so now we will be uh, going with the regular expressions and uh, like basic regular expressions and uh, we'll be seeing the use case and uh, for this use case we will be using these invoices to extract the data from this we have a lot of pages but uh, my area of interest is only the page one and we will be extracting the data from only the page one so first i'll be uh, splitting uh, everything into the page one and then we'll be going for the uh, data extraction of this So yeah, let us come to the regular expressions before getting into the use case. So what actually the regular expressions is, uh, uh, I think we already covered the variables and uh, string methods in our previous sessions. So uh, what I feel about the regular expressions is there is no much difference uh, when it compared to the string methods, but it's just an extension to the existing string methods. Like um, when it comes to our activities in UiPath as well for our regular expressions, let me create a project. So when it comes to regular expressions, we have only three activities, each match, matches, and replace. And uh, we have seen that like even the replace is also uh, available in the string methods. It is just to replace any particular string value in a, like any uh, uh, word or like any substring in a string. And here the replace uh, will do the same thing, but here it will be based on some patterns. And uh, we'll matches is like it will check uh, it will return you the whatever the pattern is matching to that and uh, is matches is simple like uh, we have in string methods like that we have a dot contains method in the similar way it will check whether this uh, is available in that particular string or not so when it comes to these uh, regular expression patterns it's simple like uh, let us suppose i am just writing So, so this is the website like where we will be uh, like uh, just uh, uh, trying to uh, build our regular expressions or like uh, try to test our regular expressions. So here I just want to take uh, at what time we are doing that is a numerical constraint. So I'll be providing a like slash D plus. And this is, this is the pattern actually. I'm trying to check whether that is available here or not. And highlight that and let us suppose if i change it to 12 pm that will be highlighted so like in string methods like we can check whether exactly six is available here or not but here we can check whether any numerical value is available or not that is the extension uh, like uh, what i'm saying is like extension to the our um, uh, string methods and let us do our exercise now, like uh, I'll, we'll start with our uh, uh, actual use case and we will uh, see like uh, how we are using the regular expressions on these invoices. First, I want to split every document into single pages. So uh, I kept this folder under the, uh, like on your desktop under this folder. So first I need to get all these files in order to process these uh, documents. First, let me drag and drop this. Okay. 
it's a good uh, practice that we should always rename whatever the activities we are going to drag and drop on the uh, design panel. And uh, for each and every uh, sequence also, we need to give the meaningful names and uh, we need to give a meaningful name to each and every uh, variables as well. So first I want to get this folder part. I don't want to give a hard code uh, till the desktop because uh, it will be changing from system to system. So what I will do is I will just put an activity we have, get environment variable for a folder. This, like we can select any of the folders, like whatever we have in our user, right? Like our documents, all these we can, uh, uh, we'll be getting here. And I just want uh, my area of interest is only desktop. So I'll just rename this to get environment folder. So my habit of writing is like, just to put down the parentheses. Desktop. We'll be creating a variable for this. Just writing a log message here. Just to check whether I'm getting the desired value for this one. Uh, yeah, I got it. Now I need the folder path for invoices. This is hard coded value I'm giving, but uh, in terms of when we are doing in the projects, like we'll be putting that in uh, some configuration files or in assets. Sign. So we need to combine these two paths. So there are two ways to do that. Desktop folder path plus slash, and we can give this invoices. This is one way because it's a string and we can use a string, a string concatenation. But sometimes we may have this uh, slash or sometimes we might be missing that in the previous uh, path uh, variables. So the better approach is just to use this method dot combine. And we just need to give all the values into the comma separated. Okay. And I just need to rename this. Why we are renaming all these activities? Why we are saying that it's the best practice to do that? In case if any error occurred, <coughs> we will be getting this name name of the activity, so that it will be easier for us to go back and check uh, where the actually error was occurred. And now we need to get all the files, whatever we have in this particular folder. So for that, like uh, we need to look through each file for each. So to get the files from the folder, we have a method directory get files. It's just we need to do the folder path. So string value. This type of argument is just to say that like it is like when we say directory dot get files, it will be returning us the list of uh, file paths, whatever the files we have, which means like it's a list of uh, or we can say array of uh, strings. So my type argument is like each value inside this array is a string value. So I just want to print all these values. So I want to rename this for each invoice. And see. Sorry. 
reason I didn't change it. So. So here are the four uh, file parts. We got all the files. And uh, as I said, like our area of interest is only the phase one. So I need to extract uh, only the phase one. So for that, uh, what we have in the PDF activities is don't have the PDF activities. So we need to install from these manage packages, all packages. We just need to type only PDF. And we got uipath.pdf activities. So now install it. Whenever you're installing, right, like we'll be seeing like preview and uh, versions. Like preview is like it was still under the preview, like it was not yet stable. So we should always go with the stable releases when we are working on the projects. So it is getting installed. So now I will be taking PDF, export, extract, extract PDF page range. So I'll be giving the file path, invoice. Here I'm just looking through all the invoice files. So invoice will be my file path. And output file name. I just want to uh, write like underscore page one or something uh, to the existing one. So what I will do is we already use path.combine. Now what we need to give is like we need to give the folder name and then file name what we want to give. So string invoice file folder path comma and we have the invoice we need to know the fi uh, file name. So to get that dot get file name without extension. So I don't want to have that dot PDF because I want to keep uh, underscore page one just before this uh, dot PDF. Giving this invoice and I just need to add because we got this without uh, extension. And I just want to give underscore page one. And the range is one. It allows only string variables. And we can, let us suppose if we want to three, four in that way, then we just need to give a comma separated here. For all these, I got the page ones. So for time being, I'm just deleting this as well. And after extracting that, I don't want the, in, uh, the complete document here in this. So I want to delete that. So after exporting that, I'm going to delete the invoice file, actual invoice file.
So all our invoices, actual invoices are got deleted and I, we are reminded with phase one. So I don't want to put on more. This will be changing this only. Yeah, you can do that. We will be extracting this information from all these invoices. For that, we will be using read PDF text activity just to see how we are getting the data. And we will be writing that we have a text file just to see like how in which pattern we are getting the data and how the data is like when we read from uh, that PDF document. So invoice, and we need to create a variable. Just want to write it in a text file just to see how you are getting it. I'm just writing some random file so that like it will be easier for me to see that. Let me run this flow. So now my uh, text file is also got generated and in this way I'm getting this data. So I'm just copying this and I'm putting it here in order to create the uh, regular expression patterns for the information which I want to extract. Let me open this. So I want to extract this uh, payment reference, which is nothing, nothing but the invoice number. This is what highlighted and I need the information after this. So So this symbol is saying that like look for this text and ignore this text and get the next value. So we'll get the description over here below for each and every uh, uh, or regular expression, whatever we are writing on this. this and this is for my uh, invoice number. So for this, we will be using this activity of the regular expression. So here we will be inputting the PDF text, whatever we extracted through PDF data and the regular expression pattern. We will be writing 
So this will uh, return as the innumerable regular, regular expression match. So we will be taking like it's a list of uh, it's a list uh, object. So we will be taking the first um, from first index of that list value, and we will be converting that to the string. And let us see how it goes. See here previously we just directly taken all the files whatever we have. But here we have the text files and the PDF files as well. So I want to get only the PDF files and I don't want to get the text files. For that, what I will do is I'll just put start.pdf. So it will return me only the PDF files. Run this. Successful. So I just need to ignore it. Oops. Yeah. And now it's done. I missed out this. And we have an additional space here. So to remove that. What we can do is we can just put a slash small s so that even that will be removed and we'll be getting the invoice number from this. Sometimes if you think this space may or may not be available, let us suppose if I just backspace this, then we are not getting this value. If I just put a question mark, I'm just saying that this space is an optional. In, even if we have the space or without the space, it will be highlighted. I'll go to the space. Putting that regular expression here. Sign activity here, and I'm creating a variable. Just putting it in as an activity just to assign this value to the invoice number. And now let us extract the date. So we have after this statement date. So just what we need to do is once we build up this uh, regular expression patterns, then it will be easy. Like for all the values, like we just need to replace the text. There won't be anything else. So we got in this format. Let's copy this. Matches. This date, and I will be taking the first index. I just want to print the date as well, date here.
<laughs> so, so the biggest challenge what we are going to face uh, when we are dealing with uh, uh, the PDF documents or invoices is like a date conversion. So here, if you see, uh, like we have DD, MM, uh, YYY uh, formats, and sometimes uh, it might be different. And let us see, like whether we could able to convert this directly or not. Like there are two methods to convert the date um, format. For dot two date time, one method we have, and. Uh, any like here we have a string variable so i'm just converting into string again into a specific format so that like it can be utilized at any place let us run this we got a we got an error because this format is not directly accepted by this method. Whatever the format we have here, dd slash mm slash like 25 uh, slash 11 slash 2021 is not acceptable by this particular method. So alternatively, what we have is pass dot Sorry, date time dot pass exact. We need to provide the string variable here and we need to provide the date format in which we are receiving it. We need to provide the culture also. Why I am converting in this uh, format is if we have like a 25th uh, NOV 2021, it will be easily convertible to date object by using the method which we previously used uh, convert uh, dot to date time. So let me run this flow now. There is match. And assign the value to string data. We got it. So we could able to convert into, into like a, a general generalized date format. So it will be easy for us. Now, if we use convert to dot to date time on this value, it will be working. And the error which we got uh, prior to this is because there is a space in between, like uh, I think leading or uh, trailing spaces. So I used the trim method in order to remove uh, any spaces, uh, like if we have in the beginning or end. Now let us take, I want to take the total. Need to take the due date as well. And we'll go with the due date. As D two, I'm saying like just take only two two integer values. 
So uh, let me assign a value. Okay. So I'm taking. Uh, I'll take different formats of the dates here. Okay. String date for conversion. First, what I will take is I will take um, 06 hyphen. Uh, let us take uh, some dates after, like, let us not take any date below 12th because if we are taking some date below 12th, right, it will be converted, but it will uh, implicate a wrong date values. So let me take 13th May 2022. So this is the date I, I have given for this, and I want to convert that to this variable. Okay, I'm just taking assign activity date after conversion. Dot two date time string date for conversion. String printing in movie. See these this whatever I am giving here, right? We are specifying like in which manner you want to print. If I give only two capital M's here, it will print a month in the digits like 01, 02, 03, 12, like that. If I give three, it will be printing like J and January, FEB. If I give four, it will print the complete month. Now I'll just put a log message here just to see what I am getting. After conversion, let me run this file. So I got 13th May 2022. Let me do one thing. Let me here. Jan. I got 13th January 2022. So here, what I will be doing is instead of this, I'll just give 01. See, I'm getting the error. String was not recognized as a valid date time because see when I kept it Jan, J and uh, it will be easier for everyone to understand which is month and which is date. But here, if you see here, it might be considering this 13th as uh, month, like this date, date, two date time is there, right? Convert two date time method is con will consider this as a date. If I give 12 here, it will consider the first December. Which is a wrong implication, right, for me. So let us suppose if I give 13 here, and how I need to convert this? Because if I if I was already aware of this, which is date and which is month, what I will do is instead of using this method, I will use date time dot parse exact. Like I'm passing the date string value to date with exact format. So I just need to give the format here in which format I receive. It is dd hyphen mm hyphen one, two, three, four, wise. System dot globalization. Now, if I run this, See here, it properly converted it. 
in case if I change um, 12, D1, now this will throw an error for me because I said like I'll be getting DD MM, but here it is MM DD. So what we need to do is we need to change it here. Got it? Okay. So we'll continue our thing. So again, I need like for this due date, I just need this. There are two ways to get this data. One is like in the similar way, like what we are doing it here. Two slash D. So it will return me the exact date, whatever is available after due date. And let me go on thing. So I can give in this way as well, like I can give the strings after and before strings as well to identify this value or else I can give this string and then this date format as well. Check this out. Just we are signing due date here. And we need to do in the same format because the formats are same. So I'm just copying this and um, just I'll just change the one variable here. Here. And this yeah, I got all the due dates. What else I need is like I need the total charges. So I need this value total charges. And uh, just uh, anyhow, like we got this value, like we can use this directly in the in this just.
so i just want to get all the currencies highlighted because see if we see here right the amount this is different and this is different for this we have a comma and for this we don't have a comma and when we increase uh, some more uh, uh, digits then we'll get few more commas so first let us match for these two slash plus So this should give us uh, the currency values. Let us suppose if I want to type number this also should be highlighted. So this is how we can get the currency value uh, wherever we have. All the currencies are highlighted now. Either we have the comma or mul multiple values like so in this way, we can get the currency values. And for this total charges, we just need, uh, we can even go with this as well. Like I can just simply So even we can give in this way, or we can just put a, a dot asterisk as well. Taking the sign activity. I want to print invoice amount. Let me run this flow. I got it. So let me tell you one thing, like why I'm saying like we need to rename all the activities uh, uh, as a best practice. So let me do one thing. I'll just remove um, or write uh, some Just to make this error out, I'm just writing this. Let me run this. I got an error. Where I got the error? Assign string invoice amount. Object reference is not because here I'm getting the error because there is no match and uh, like I, it did it didn't return me any value. But I'm trying to access the first index, so I got to know that like I got an error here exactly because see if I didn't rename right. One, two, three, four. I have four SN activities and I'm not sure like exactly where I got this error. That's why like uh, as a best practice, we should always rename. So now we got all the values and now we are we could able to extract each and uh, every PDF document value. But um, so I want to put all this into a uh, Excel file or some database or uh, like uh, I want to write this uh, whole data into Excel. And after that, I want to utilize in some other process as well, right? So let me do one thing. Let me take build data table activity. This will be to build the data table. Uh, 
let me build that columns voice number good do it invoice and so i want to add the whole data here adding we will be using add data row the data table is dt invoice data and i need to give the array here so first one is invoice number to invoice number Then date is the invoice date. Second due date. Second invoice number. So now the data is got added here, and I'll be writing it to a um, Excel file. We'll be writing in the same folder, stating that voice data for excellence. Okay. The headers and the sheet name is voice data in the table DT voice data. And this I have an Excel file. Unfortunately, I don't uh, have it here. Let me take it to my local. So we got all the data for all the invoices: invoice number, invoice date, due date, and invoice ID. To validate that, we open one. This is NVRH. NVRH. Value is two eight six zero. Two eight six zero. Statement date is twenty fifth November twenty twenty one. Twenty fifth November twenty twenty one, and due date is twenty five December. With this, uh, I think we're done with our use case as well. And uh, this website, I'm just posting in the chat so that like um, you can try your regular expressions here, and you can try to um, explore a bit more on this. Um, so now I think we uh, open for the questions. Uh, Uh, Rohit, are uh, you there? So someone asked, like, does the PDF has the option for password? Yes, we can view the password if it is a password protected.
can ask like can we download invoices you can you can even create your invoices also like you can just use your excel template and you can convert it to pdf read pdf text reads the entire text yes Uh, Parcel two. Most of the questions already been answered. Uh, if anyone is actually having any issues, uh, please unmute yourself, and we can actually talk about. So I've given the access for unmuting anyone. If anyone wants to do that, he is he can do that. Please go one by one. Uh -huh. Hi, Patrudu. Good evening. Yeah, hi. Thank you for uh, today's wonderful session. And um, I have a question. Uh, you explained this invoices, right? Is this an unstructured data? Uh, Sarita, if you don't mind, can you be a bit louder? Uh, 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 the one which you have explained about invoices by extracting data from that one, is that an unstructured data? Oh, it's a semi-structured. So I mentioned, uh, right, like, um, Invoices will be semi-structured and uh, see here, when I said like invoices, right? Like it will be semi-structured. Unstructured is something that uh, uh, you can take any journals, uh, like technical journals or like uh, a, when you see your rental agreements or like these kind of things are like completely unstructured. But he, here we have a structure, but it will be changing from uh, company to company right so that's why we are saying like it's a semi-structure okay okay thank you Patrudu. and uh, you mentioned right uh, you can use document understanding for that as well but yes. we did it without using document document understanding uh, so, I cut, uh, sorry uh, but we, you, I mean, you said that we will use document understanding for a semi structure. Uh, but in this case, for today's session, you ex you explained without using documentation. So, understanding. document understanding uh, is a very advanced concept. What we have in the UI path. So, um, so that's why I mentioned like we have the sessions for uh, document understanding in our uh, UI path academy. And after like completing this complete uh, series, right, like this um, developer series, uh, you can explore that from the academy. Like document understanding is like a bit, uh, um, I can say, okay. advanced topic. Okay, so we can achieve through this, but if we want an advance, we can achieve through document understanding. Right? Yes, first you need to be very strong with like uh, these basic, and uh, once you complete this, um, uh, all the sessions, like whatever we have planned for this, in this um, series, then you can try go through the academy and you can explore uh, uh, okay. the document understanding as well. Okay, thank you for clearing my doubts. Thank you, thank you so much, Dr. and the team. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Patrulu. First of all, thanks for the wonderful session. I have one question. Uh, like, is there any other way to extract data from uh, like PDF rather than using this regex expression and all? Yeah, we have like, uh, we can use the uh, screen scrapping methods and uh, we can use uh, our uh, like uh, any uh, machine learning models or like uh, document understanding. We can use them as well. And see, uh, why I uh, came uh, through this uh, uh, regular expression is like, it will completely work in the background. And it's not necessary for you to open the PDF document or like uh, to do the screen scrapping and all. And uh, it is a bit faster compared to the uh, uh, like opening the PDF document and uh, uh, using the screen scrapping. And uh, like when you uh, minimize your UI interactions, then uh, the chances of uh, failures will be less. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the answer. Any more questions? Uh, if 
If it's not related with the PDF extraction, also we are good to reply on that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like specific to PDF automation. Like uh, it's related to UI path. You can ask any questions. And I'll just add a few points on what uh, Parthidu just mentioned for the document understanding. Document understanding is an advanced level of extraction, uh, which is available for, with the UiPath right now. So if you want to use document understanding, you means it's actually and very advanced for unstructured data as well, and also structured data. And you can also extract the handwriting written ex, uh, documents from there as well. It also helps you with the signatures to be identified inside there. So it's totally dependent on how you need to actually extract. It depends on the layout of the structure that you're extracting and how the data needs to be extracted. <laughs> so uh, even like uh, when Rohit is uploading uh, this video on YouTube, right? Like he'll be putting uh, the uh, um, links for the document understanding as well from the academy. So the people can sign up there and like they can explore like uh, once they're comfortable with the uh, UI path uh, studio and like uh, the development, then you can start exploring that as well. And uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure that like uh, document understanding is a very interesting concept, I think, uh, which uh, we have in UI path and uh, which will be very helpful. Like uh, I, I saw, like I worked with many models, like uh, I work with uh, Abby Flexi Capture and uh, a couple of other machine learning models as well. Like I don't want to mention the names of the vendors, but uh, uh, UiPath, a pre-trained model is giving me a very good response or very good result with a good accuracy with uh, like, uh, even without I am training, like it was already pre-trained with a lot of invoices or like a lot of documents. So I think uh, it's very good or exciting uh, uh, play, uh, concept like which we can explore more. Yeah, and also to learn about uh, advanced topics, I, uh, you know, there has been questions coming in. Uh, just go to uh, community.uipart.com. Just I'll just quickly share the screen and show you. Uh, this is the website. Uh, let me hide. Okay. Um, over here, what I would suggest is just scroll down and you will find all the different chapters where you will be, where regular meetups are organized. Join the chapter which is relevant for you. So what I would suggest from my side, definitely join the EMEA and APAC virtual chapter. And uh, then you go to the Asia Pacific and join the city where you are based so that you can access the in-person meetups when they are organized in your city. Uh, all these cities also organize regular virtual sessions and I see quite a lot of sessions now are happening around document understanding so if that uh, session is particularly of your interest you can certainly access it um, even these are uh, you can just see the upcoming events on the main page itself so you can even uh, scroll uh, on the side and see different sessions that are gonna happen so yeah, please do join any chapter which is uh, directly relevant to you. D definitely join the chapter um, where uh, you are located in person so that uh, any of the in-person meetups, you will make sure that you don't miss out. For example, on June 18, there is this one session on document understanding with the regex extractor, but that is an in-person meetup. Similarly, a lot of such sessions happen and uh, quite a lot of that, uh, I would say still majority of the sessions are happening virtually. So it doesn't matter which city you are based in, you will anyway be able to access it yeah thank you shubham for sharing yeah. um any any last question uh, anyone wants to ask before we close it up i think we're good Okay, if that's the case, thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining. Um, I hope uh, it was a, a valuable session for you. In case any of your friends or any of your colleagues want to attend the session, as you already know, all the recordings are being uploaded on the event page, so you can certainly share that. If you have any particular requests around, uh, you know, any of the sessions, uh, please do write to me separately on LinkedIn. I'll I'll take those into consideration so that any future meetups that are being organized, um, you know, you can you can get access to those uh, content. Melissa, how long are the recordings going to be available? Uh, the recordings will uh, start to be available, I would say around two hours since once this uh, program is over and it will always be available. We will never be taking down the recording, so you don't need to worry about that. Yeah. 
please do recommend your colleagues and friends also to join uh, these sessions. These are free sessions. Uh, anyone who wants to learn, uh, we want to and uh, create create as many platforms as possible where they are able to access the knowledge and expertise from our from our experts. Uh, Patru, do please share your LinkedIn link, please. Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Otherwise, thank you all. Thank you so much, Patrudu, for uh, for for taking out your time and uh, and uh, sharing sharing uh, you know and, and taking this session. And uh, also special thanks to Shubham uh, for for being here um, uh, and and uh, answering very proactively to all the questions that are coming in chat. Really, really appreciate it. So it and um, thanks for uh, 